abrazo e non provo con ciò che la luce ha dato con ciò che la Jai Om Vishnu Bhav Paramahansa Paramacharya Also tell us it's a she, Shima His Divine Grace Savaya Chadanad Abhakta Vedana Gosami Shila Pumpad Ki Jai Iskan Bhavnaracharya Shila Pumpad Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Namacharya Shila Huila Stakur Ki Jai Oren say Kahoshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Vityananda Shikwe to get out of hall. Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktivan Nikajan Shishi Radhakrishna Gopi Gopada Sayam Kun Radhakunda Kiri Gopadan Kijai Rindavadam Kijai Turnam Kijai Chikamasami Kijai 
Gimana mai kejai? Cimane kelas sedai bijai, sedai wakda berlindung kejai. Go, bring it under the hand. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to the symbol of devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Gauranga. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. We're going to read the translation to this poem to the departed Vaishnavas written by Narutama Das Thakur. He who brought the treasure of divine love and was filled with compassion and mercy, whereas such a personality as Srinivas Acharya had gone. Where am I, Svarup Damodara and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das? The Sriyam Kuala. Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das? Kuliraj. Where did Lord Gauranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. Where will I find Lord Gauranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Gauranga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narottama Das simply weeps. So, as I mentioned, today is the commemoration of the disappearance day, days of these two great personalities, Mukunda Dat, and also Kolobechar Shiddha, and also it is Nana Yatra. Yesterday, of course, was the Panihati uh, official day celebration. Today we're going to be having the Panihati celebration during the Sunday feast. We'll speak about that during that time. And as far as Snanayatra, it would be nice if we had a Snanayatra here, but Snanayatra is the bathing of Lord Jagannath, of all of David Subhadra, uh, and after which time they apparently get sick, and they have to have this uh, period of time, 14 days, in which they are not on the altar anymore, <laughs> but they get fed in a separate room, those uh, temples that have Jagannath deities. And I said apparently they get sick because Christian can't get sick, he has a spiritual body. But he's making believe he is sick so he can be alone with his wife. He needs a vacation. <laughs> you know, because when you're God, you know, people are just like bothering you all the time. So he wants a vacation and he makes believe. And when he's with his wife, of course, I'm just going to tell the story real quickly. When he's with his wife, he starts to remember his girlfriends. <laughs> of course, in this material world, we have a perverted reflection of that. <laughs> Someone gets tired of their wife and they remember their girlfriends. But Krishna, he's with his wife, and his girlfriends are actually the origin of which his wives are expansions. So that's why his wife and wives remind him of his girlfriends. So Krishna can do those things. And actually, everyone is Krishna's wife, and everyone is feminine in relationship to Krishna. There's no males, so to speak. Someone may have it, apparently a male form in the spiritual world, but in relationship to Krishna, we're all prakriti. We're all owned by Krishna. We're his property. So, anyway. So, Krishna remembers his girlfriends, being with his wife, and then he tells his wife, I'm going for a walk. And he goes for a walk, and it's a long walk. It doesn't go back to like nine days, you know. Shoo. On the fifth day, his wife sends this, uh, uh, his wife sends this Lakshmi Vijaya. His wife sends actually her associates to beat up her husband's associates, and that's the fifth day. And he still doesn't come back till like nine days. So that's <laughs> interesting, very romantic. So it begins with the Snani Yatra, the bathing ceremony. And today is the commemoration of Jagannath Puri. They're bathing the deities now. And everyone gets a chance to bathe Lord Jagannath on the Snani Yatra day. So maybe in the future we can do that here too. So in any case, maybe uh, some of the devotees who have Jagannath deities can bring them, but today we have such a tight program, there's no time for anything. So, in addition, it is the uh, disappearance of the days of these two great personalities whom we'll be speaking about. So, Omagana, Timananda, Shah, Gananjana, Shlatea, Chakshur, and Vinitam, 
Yena Tosmai Shihave Namaha. Source, we're going to talk about Mukunda Dad. Mukunda Dad, of course, was the childhood friend, the classmate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and his brother was the famous Vasudev Dad. Vasudev Dad was, as Lord Chaitanya said, compassion personified, because Vasudev Dad had said to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Lord Chaitanya said, do you want anything? He said, yes. I want to stay in the material world and take everybody's karma and let everybody else go back to God. That is intense. So anyway, it's a very good family. It's described uh, that Mukunda Dat in his past, let's say, appearance, can't say past life for the devotee, but you say past appearance, uh, was one of the two singers, Madhukan and Madhukrat, who were associates of Krishna. And they took birth during Kali Yuga in, a, in the Dhatta family. Actually, that was the same family that Prabhupada was in. Part of Prabhupada's family is the Dhatta family. So, Mukunda was very intelligent when he was young. He studied logic and rhetoric. Rhetoric means how to speak. Logic means understanding when things make sense, don't make sense. And rhetoric is speaking. Being able to be in anyone. So, uh, Mukunda never tried to defeat Lord Chaitanya. Of course, Lord Chaitanya, when he was young, he acted like someone who was against the devotees or someone who was just simply interested in logic. So, even before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had some education, uh, Mukunda actually asked Lord Chaitanya to discuss rhetoric and logic, and Lord Chaitanya, even before his education, was able to refute all of Mukunda's uh, aphorisms, logical aphorisms and rhetoric aphorisms. And so Mukunda thought, boy, let me pray that this person becomes a great devotee of Krishna. So uh, Mukunda, of course, was known for his songs, uh, it's described he would sing so wonderfully that a Dwaita Charya would take Mukunda and put him on his lap. He was so pleased with Mukunda. And uh, Ishwara Puri, the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also was overwhelmed with ecstasy when he heard Mukunda singing. Uh, so uh, it's described that. Uh, when uh, Lord Chaitanya, after he took initiation, heard Mukunda's kirtan, fell, fell unconscious on the ground and said, Mukunda, you're the most fortunate one. I have wasted my time unnecessarily learning useless theories. My life has passed uselessly without having Krishna. Because that's a fact. Without Krishna, the life has no value. Useless. Nada. Zilch. So, and it was, of course, it was Mukunda who, who brought Gadada Pandit Goswami to see Pundarik Vijaniti, and Pundarik Vijaniti became the spiritual master of Gadada Pandit Goswami. And Pundarik Vijaniti was Rishabhanu in his previous appearance. Rishabhanu was the father of Srimati Radharani. So, uh, then there's this famous story, which we talked about the other day, that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, displaying his Mahabhava, his great spiritual emotion, and he was giving everyone love of God and telling everybody who they were in their previous lives. And then Mukunda wasn't there. He was outside the whole uh, celebration, waiting restlessly for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and everyone said, why aren't you calling Mukunda? And then Lord Chaitanya replied, uh, Mukunda is not sincere. And the reason Lord Chaitanya was saying that is because if Lord Mukunda was uh, hanging out, that is associating with those who spoke against sometimes Lord Chaitanya and were insincere hypocrites. So, uh, hearing this, Mukunda became determined to commit suicide. He thought, if I can't have Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, I'm going to end my life. And so, Srivas appealed to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
explaining what Mukunda was thinking. And Lord Chaitanya said, Mukunda will be blessed by me only after millions of births. And so when he heard this, Mukunda began dancing joyfully. And he said, I will have it, I will have it. I will be able to have his darshan after millions of births. So of course this is patience. Mostly people are very impatient. They want pure devotional service in five years or less, or their money back guaranteed. So, so anyway, so when Lord Chaitanya heard how Mukunda was willing to be patient, Lord Chaitanya said, come here, come here. And Mukunda, being so humble, said, no, I won't go near him with my sinful body. I will pass millions of births crying for him. And Lord Chaitanya said, basically, uh, due to your firm determination, faith, and profound respect, you have completed that time within one second. <laughs> Pretty good. So that's Utsaha, Mustiya, Darya, Tatta, Karma, Vartana. Everybody knows that? Make the structure. Enthusiasm, patience, determination. You see, this is the price of Krishna consciousness. And of course, Tatat Karma Pratana, Sangha's jealous So anyway, the other principles to like giving up bad association, following the footsteps of the acharyas, etc. So, uh, and then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him. And everyone was shouting, Hari Hari, when they heard this. And at, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, uh, Mukunda was singing at the sannyas ceremony of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Mukunda was also dancing. Uh, so in Jagannath Puri, Mukunda stayed with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and listened to his kirtan regularly, and he passed away. And this particular day, which is known as the full moon day, day of the month of Jaista, which is usually May, June, most years, unless you get a moon show to Mass, and then it becomes later. Okay, and here's this very interesting story of Kolavetra Shiddha, who sometimes is known as Shiddhara Pandit. And he also disappeared on this day many, many years ago. So Kolavetra Shiddha, was basically a very, very poor person. Very, very poor, materially speaking. I mean, he had clothes that were full of holes, and he hardly had anything to eat, and his whole business was selling parts of bananas, banana trees, of course. In, the, in India, you not only eat the banana, but you can actually eat the tree itself, you know, part of the tree, the uh, young tree, the banana tree, you can eat it. It's very nice, you can make a sabji out of it. Mm. I've had that many times. Very, very tasty. In other parts of the banana, of course, you don't, don't eat the peel. I don't think there's anything you do with the peel. Of course, in the 1960s and 50s, the hippies used to use the peel, right? For something else, we we'll, won't we'll mention. So, uh, so he used to sell bananas, vegetables, the leaves, and the cups made from the leaves. So, and he was so austere that 50% of whatever money he collected, he would use to worship the Ganges. Wow. Somehow or other he maintained himself, and he would wake up very early, you know, like at midnight, and be chanting Hare Krishna all night long. And his neighbors who were atheistic got really upset. And they would criticize him, saying, the reason he's yelling and screaming like that is he's hungry. He's moaning in hunger. But they didn't understand the uh, mood of a pure devotee by Shudar. So anyway, so he just tolerated all that and went on. Uh, he didn't really like to haggle over prices like people do in India. Like if you go to India, everything is a bargain. You got a bargain for everything, like a rickshaw or anything you buy, and you have to be expert at walking away, coming back, they run after you. That's India. So uh, anyway, so he didn't like the bargain. So he had a 
set price, and then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he liked to bargain, so the Lord Chaitanya would come to him every day and uh, to purchase the bananas and vegetables and everything like that. And Lord Chaitanya would offer half that price, the fixed price. Uh, and he uh, is described that Lord Chaitanya would snatch the vegetables and Shridhar would actually grab the vegetables from Lord Chaitanya and say, hey, you can't have it at that price. And, then, and they'd be pulling the vegetables back and forth. I guess like a Loki, I mean, obviously you couldn't pull spinach back and forth. <laughs> you know, spinach would rip. A big Loki squash, no, no, can't give it to you. And, they, and there would be a big crowd that would surround them, just watching all the fun. <laughs> it's like if something happens, you get a crowd within 10 seconds or less. Uh, and uh, and Lord Chaitanya, these are some of the quotes. Uh, Lord Chaitanya would say, why do you behave like this? Uh, something that you are a renunciant. I know that you have gotten a lot of hidden wealth. You're trying to snatch these things out of my hand, but after so many days, you still don't know who I am. I am the father of the Ganges who you worship. And of course, Kolovich uh, should have thought this guy was crazy. Just like we, we understand if someone comes and says, I'm God, sometimes we get these, oh, not so much anymore, but in the 1960s, the Purple will remember this. You, sometimes you get these people come to the temple, <laughs> and they say, I'm God, you're worshiping me on the altar. <laughs> they just be some hippie who hadn't taken a bath in three years. So, <laughs> so should I, of course, would just like, oh, Vishnu, Vishnu, Oh my God, this guy is crazy. But Lord Chaitanya was very beautiful and, you know, attractive. And Shura was saying, wow, you know, he was like, like a dilemma here. Here's this attractive Brahmin boy. Uh, and finally, uh, Shura just got frustrated and said, please listen to me, Thakur. I'm your dog, so kindly forgive me. You don't have to pay anything, take it for free. Not because he realized that Lord Chaitanya was God, but because Lord Chaitanya was a Brahmin. And Shri would sometimes say to Lord Chaitanya, aren't there any other stores you, in this whole marketplace you can go to? And Lord Chaitanya said, you are my regular supplier. Why should I give you up? <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya, uh, then he said to Lord Chaitanya, it's all right, so just take everything for free if you want. And then Lord Chaitanya said, but you're just going to give me old rotten things. <laughs> Anyway, so this way they had an argument back and forth. And Lord Chaitanya used to eat everyday vegetable preparations uh, made from Shudar's banana stalks and banana flowers and eat on the banana leaf plates and cups. You know, so he, he very much loved the devotion. Because Lord Chaitanya will not eat anything that's prepared by a non devotee or someone who doesn't have devotion. It's just like when we offer. So Krishna offered the Lord Chaitanya, we offer it through the Brahm Brahma, our spiritual master, and his spiritual master, all the way back to Krishna. That's the system. Because one has to have pure devotion to actually have Krishna accept something. And if someone has pure devotion, one can offer even banana peels by accident. And Krishna will accept this out of devotion. Hmm. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is more teasing. Lord Chaitanya would say, all day long you chant Hari Hari, you worship Sri Lakshmi Narayan as well. How is it you are so poor? In other words, you're worshiping Lakshmi. Why are you so poor? You have so little eat and your clothes are so meager. And Sridhar replied, although, Thakur, although I may eat very little, I'm not fasting as for my clothes, whether there are few or many, I still I wear something. And it was patched in ten places. There's no thatch on his roof, Lord Chaitanya would say. Uh, he said, just see, you know, if you really want to be wealthy, you should worship the goddess Chandi and Durga. <laughs> and then should I be very intelligent, said, you have spoken correctly, dear Thakur. Still, everyone's days are passing the same. The king lives in a jeweled palace and eats dainty foodstuffs and wears the most excellent apparel. And the birds simply live in the treetops. But tomorrow, 
they will become equals because everyone has to read the results of his own activities according to the will of the Lord. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Shridhar, I know you have so much wealth, but you are simply hiding it. I'm going to tell everyone. I see how you cheat the people. And then Shridhar said, Thakur, you should go home now. I don't want to quarrel with you. Just one more thing, Shridhar. Whatever you want to give me, please bring it now. Unless you give me something, I cannot leave here. Look, Pandit, I'm a poor man. By selling banana stalks and bananas, I'm not even able to feed myself properly. I just don't have anything suitable for you. And Lord Chaitanya said, all right, let your buried riches remain hidden. For now, just give me some banana stalks, bananas, and banana flowers. And then, and then, should I was thinking, this is actually from the Chaitanya Bhagavad, Chaitanya Mangal. Should I, should I was thinking, you know, if I answered back too much, he might beat me. He's, he's a little crazy. <laughs> I won't be able to do anything. And because he's a Brahmin, I can't do anything. So in this way, they had arguments. Uh, so Lord Chaitanya very much enjoyed these joking words uh, with Sridhar. Uh, and then one time he said, uh, he asked Sridhar, what do you think of me? If you tell me truthfully, then I'll go. And Sridhar said, you are a son of a Brahmin, an expansion of Vishnu. And Lord Chaitanya replied, Shridhar, I'm surprised you still don't know who I am. I am a coward boy. The glories of your mother Ganges are due to me. And Shridhar replied, you don't even respect mother Ganges. As people get older, they become subdued and temperate, but at your age, you are getting more and more restless. You would better go home and don't fight with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this way they have these exchanges between each, each other. And so you know, every day Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go there and have these arguments with Shiddhar. Really amazing. So this, you see that uh, the Supreme Personality of God is not like some stereotypical personality. You know, you picture God. He's just sitting there and he just has a boring life. And, you know, all he can do is just like reward you the uh, fruits of your activities or the fruits of your consciousness. And really what we're talking about or what people are talking about when they're picturing God as a judge, they're talking about Yamaraj. Like Prabhupada said, it was very interesting. I mean, this, this was told to me not only by Prabhupada, but in the religion that I was a member of before I joined the Krishna Conscious Movement. Uh, I remember sitting one time in this religious ceremony, and uh, the minister, priest, rabbi, whatever he was, he said, God has a book, and he's writing down everything you do. I got scared. He knows I have my comic books right in the middle of <laughs> my Bible. <laughs> I said, you know, he's writing this down. I got, got really scared because it was so boring. Anyway, so, and then Prabhupada said the same thing. Or, and, and the Vedic leaders say the same. Prabhupada said one time, you know, Krishna has a book. And then, uh, then in the Chaitanya Bhagavad, it's mentioned that uh, Yamaraj has this uh, Chitra Gupta, the scribe, who keeps a book of everything you do. So that is Yamaraj who's the judge. Not Krishna. Krishna has better things to do. You know, Goloka is even if Ashtiyaki like Mabhuta. Krishna is in Goloka Vrindavan, doesn't leave there, and he's enjoying himself. So Lord Chaitanya is enjoying these different rasas, which means the taste from different exchanges. You know, there's teasing, getting angry, all sorts of interesting things. So eventually, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed who he was. That's called Mahaprabhu. Mahaprakash, Mahabhav. And then he was sitting on the altar in Srivas Pandit's temple. And at that time he was beginning to call all of his devotees, one after another. And he said, Bring Sridhar here. Let him see my divine form. So this was the middle of the night. And Sridhar was sitting in his house chanting Hari Nam in the middle of the night. 
rising early is the sign of a devotee who's determined. Uh, for example, Shiva Prabhupada, he would rise early, you know, it's 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And that's when he did his writing. He usually didn't do too much writing during the day. During the day, you know, morning walk, class, talking to the devotees, conversations, preaching, you know, noon prasadam, taking rest after noon prasadam. But the majority, 99% of his writing was done from about 1 o'clock in the morning till, till when he took his morning walk. Because that's the time it's peaceful. One can accomplish 10 times the amount during that time. I'm not talking about business. <laughs> not that one should do business during that time. But as far as studying, as far as writing, that's the time to do it. By Prabhupada's example. So anyway, Shudar was up at midnight and Lord Chaitanya was calling for him. He sent some of the devotees. And Shudar did not hear the devotees calling. He was so much absorbed in the holy name. So finally, they had to just like go and like basically knock on his door and yell. And uh, then he asked them, what brings you here in the middle of the night? And they said, Shudar, hurry up. Mahaprabhu is calling you. He sent us to bring you to him. And Shudar, it's described in the uh, Chaitanya Bhagavad Gita, Shudar just fainted on the ground in complete ecstasy. Uh, and the devotees picked him up and basically carried him to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is a quote. Uh, Lord Chaitanya said, Shudar, come here, come here. In order to get a glimpse of me, you have performed so much worship for so many births. And in this life as well, you have served me so much with great satisfaction. Have I tasted your vegetables, bananas, banana flowers, eaten with rice from your banana leaves? Should I have begotten all this? Should I just get up and see my divine form? This form, even the Prasanna Vedas are not qualified to see. Mm. Just one, one point is, in his previous appearance, Should I was my mungo, uh, the famous uh, joker, you know, associate of Krishna, and Madhav Mango, he's always joking and sometimes even causing, uh, getting Krishna in trouble. You know, one time Krishna was late from uh, pasturing the cows and uh, Yashodamai asked Krishna, you know, why are you late? And before Krishna could say anything, Madhav Mango was right next to him. He said he was just looking to the girls. <laughs> and Krishna basically just said, Shut up. <laughs> you know, not those words, you know, chupuro in Hindi. That chup. So uh, just be quiet, you're gonna be in trouble. So this way he would he, he would sometimes carry messages and you know, just like really be funny all the time. So this is why he became Shudar Pandit in this particular appearance. Uh, so anyway. So Shudar got up at this particular point and he saw uh, Lord Chaitanya with a bluish bodily complexion. And he saw Lord Chaitanya holding the flute and right next to Lord Chaitanya was Balaram standing on his right. And the goddess of fortune was handing him a betel, uh, pond leaves. While Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva continue to recite him. So this is Shudar's vision. Amazing vision. Of course, that because Lord Chaitanya is Shanda Shundra. Hmm. And then Lord Chaitanya said to Shudar, uh, uh, you should offer some prayers to me. <laughs> and Shudar, he wasn't educated. You know, just completely uneducated. But you know, uneducated. So how was he going to offer prayers? It wasn't like Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya or these other devotees. He said, Look, Chaitanya or Thakur, I don't know anything. And then Lord Chaitanya said, Okay, I bless you that the goddess Sadasati will be present on your tongue. So immediately he began to offer these like amazing prayers, and I think for an hour and a half. 
in Sanskrit and Bengali. Here's some of them. Jaya Jaya Mahaprabhu Jaya Vishwambar. Jaya Jaya Navadvi Purandara. That's Bengali, of course. Jaya Jaya Nanta Brahmanan Brahmanda Kotina. Uh, that means the Lord of ten millions of universes. Jaya Jaya Sachi Punyavati Garba Chat. Uh, that means the Lord who took birth in the womb of the pious and chaste Sachi. So, anyway, he offered these prayers, beautiful prayers, for about an hour and a half. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, Now you should ask for a benediction for me. And Sridhar said, Thakur, I don't want any benediction, but then if you want to bless me, someday or some way, this is my request. And I'm going to read the Bengali because it's very beautiful Bengali. Se Brahman Kari Nila Mor Kolopat Se Brahman Hog Mor Janma Jan Janma Nath Se Brahman Mor Brahman Sorry Brahman Mor Sange Karilo Kondal Mor Prabhu Oktar Charan Yugal. And the translation of that is very beautiful, heart rendering translation. That Brahmana who snatched away my banana leaves and cups, may he be my Lord birth after birth. That Brahman who would wrangle with me over the price of my bananas, may his lotus feet always be my object of worship. So he wanted to just like always remember those pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bargaining with him. So Shuddha began to cry very loudly and seeing his tears of love, all the devotees began to cry. Mm. And Lord Chaitanya said, You should are my servant birth after birth. I have tested you in so many ways, but I'm extremely pleased with your conduct. I have become indebted to you by your service and love for me. And the devotees were in ecstasy. Uh, here it is. Uh, and there's a verse of Chaitanya Bhagavad that's very interesting. Neither wealth, followers, or scholarship do I do devotees desire. Who can understand these servants of Lord Chaitanya? What is the effect of learning wealth, beauty, fame, and aristocratic birth other than to simply increase one's false ego and thus bring about one's end? What should our gain simply by selling bananas and radishes is unattainable by the richest of men in tens of millions of ages. Mm. So then there's the uh, ceremony. Right before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left his home to take sannyas, uh, Lord Chaitanya took a gourd. That means like a pumpkin, you know, pumpkin like that, in his hand and began to laugh. He thought to himself, how will I go to take sannyas without first eating Sridhar's bottle of gourd? You know, he's so attached to Sridhar. I can't refuse the offerings of my devotees. And then he called to his mother. This is right before he took sannyas. You know, obviously he was thinking of so many things before he was taking sannyas, but he was thinking of Sridhar. He called his mother. He said, Sridhar has taken the trouble to bring this gourd, cook it, and offer it to Krishna. And another devotee brought some milk, and Sachi Mantra prepared halwa from the gourd and milk after offering him to the deities. And Lord Chaitanya fed his devotees and ate it himself and said to Shudar, Shudar, how can I refuse what you have brought for me? But tell me if you will honor my request. And Shudar said, Thakur, just say whatever it is. Why shouldn't I be able to keep your request? <clears throat> and Lord Chaitanya said, then please come here to my house every day so that I can see you. So that night, in the middle of the night, Lord Chaitanya left his home, took sannyas, and when he resided in Jagannath Puri, Sridhar Swami used to come every year with all the devotees to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just one, one more reference. In his past incarnation, this is from uh, Chaitanya Mango, uh, he was Kusama Sabha, that's Madhavanga, Saka of Raj. 
And there's many references to this. And uh, he was one of the 12 Gopals, that means the associates of Lord Vichananda. Okay, so we have two more minutes. Any questions about Shudar Pandit or Snanayatra or Mukunda Dutt? Questions, comments? Yes. Um, I was curious about, you know, I, mean, I was thinking about how he was really absorbed, so absorbed. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about how he was so absorbed in the chain of the name, the holy name, that he couldn't, you know, he, didn't even, he wasn't even cognizant of what was going on. And I was thinking it would be so nice, obviously, to be so absorbed in the holy name to be in that place. But then my mind went, well, then how am I going to be able to perform my professional service if I was so absorbed in where you find the balance? And well, it's a certain time. Like, he was able to sell his banana leaves and whatever, you know, bananas and everything during the day. But when he was doing his sadhana, so there's a, you know, there's a time break. There's a time for everything, was it? There's time for everything. Turn, turn, turn. Anyway, there's that whole song. So, <laughs> Chai Dwight Maharaj wrote a book about that, actually. That's from the Ecclesiastes in the, in the Bible. So anyway, so uh, there's a time for everything. So when he was doing his sadhana, he was absorbing the holy names. That was at midnight. So, so really, yeah, actually a devotee asked me a question yesterday on the internet. How can one not be disturbed by everything that's happening in, in this world? And I said, you've got to have good sadhana, and that means waking up early. Without waking up early, you're really not going to be able to focus on the holy name or on the scripture or anything like that without a morning program. Prabhupada stressed. He said, everybody gets up by Baba Murta, like an hour and a half before sunrise. Unless, of course, you're unfortunate enough to live in a place like Finland, where sunrise is, <laughs> sunrise is like uh, one o'clock in the morning during the summer. It's pretty bad, isn't it? So you gotta get an hour and a half. It means you're never gonna sleep. <laughs> or, of course, it's kind of nice during the winter, because sunrise doesn't rise until <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning. So you've got it made half the year. Of course, it's not always like that. It shifts like that. So, uh, you know, get up early. The point is get up early. Sometimes I, when I was in Finland in the summer, I would get up, you know, as I usually do, get up early and walk, like about 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was light. It was the middle of the day. The sun was just like right overhead, and people were lying on the street completely drunk. Wow. <laughs> it's, so just, the way they could sleep. it's a real... I wouldn't say it's a wake-up call, but it's like, wow, what's happening here? <laughs> you know, middle of the day, but it's actually two o'clock in the morning. Okay, and I'll be going there actually in about a week. So, all glories to Shri